I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Population 100 of the Lower Peninsula, 30 miles from Lake Michigan. Grand Rapids is a typical Midwestern city, sharing the problems and joys of every other American city. It's called the furniture capital of the world. However, our industry is not restricted to furniture. Our manufacturing is mainly known corporations. Being built adjacent to some beautiful older areas. We're proud of our churches. We're proud of our schools and the far-sighted program of our boards of education. We are proud of our children and look forward to their future, especially concerned with their safety and health. We guard them against disease and accidents. We protect our children through safety programs. Not a child has been killed on his way to or from school in 21 years. I was particularly pleased when my daughter came home and told me that she had had her teeth examined in school. The next time I visited my dentist, he told me about the dental decay studies conducted in Grand Rapids by the United States Public Health Service, the University of Michigan, and the Michigan Department of Health. The water supply for Grand Rapids comes from Lake Michigan, about 30 miles west of Grand Rapids, where an intake pipe is located about a mile out in the lake. A pumping station sends the water toward Grand Rapids, where a second pumping station boosts the water load along its way to the city. These pumps can deliver 60 million gallons of water a day to our filtration plant. The superintendent explains to us that alum charcoal and chlorine are added to the water before it enters the mixing basin. Sulfur dioxide and sodium fluoride are added after the water leaves the settling basins and before it enters the filters. The materials used in water production include sand and gravel, lime, alum, charcoal, fluoride, chlorine, and sulfur dioxide. The alum is used to precipitate the foreign material from the water. The charcoal to remove odors and taste, and the sodium fluoride to reduce the amount of tooth decay. The chlorine purifies the water, and the sulfur dioxide is used to remove the excess chlorine in the water. Here we see the equipment used to add sodium fluoride to the water supply. This carefully controlled amount of fluoride is perfectly safe and absolutely harmless. From the filtration plant, the water is distributed through our water system to our homes. Here is water produced under the most exacting conditions, containing a safe, controlled amount of sodium fluoride, which will reduce tooth decay in our children. The approximate cost of fluoridation of the water supply is 14 cents per person per year. This map shows towns using naturally fluoridated water containing 7 tenths parts per million of fluoride. These towns add fluoride in a controlled amount and over 30 million people are now drinking controlled fluoridated water. There's no difference between the fluoride in naturally fluoridated water and the fluoride added to water in a controlled fashion. These two samples of naturally fluoridated water were taken from two wells located near Saginaw and Flint. The water from wells A and B being placed in beakers then poured into test tubes. Here we see a beaker of Grand Rapids water supplemented with fluoride and distilled water which contains no fluoride. 
The reagent for the test is drawn into a pipette and is placed in all four of the test tubes. Samples A and B from the naturally fluoridated wells, Grand Rapids water, and water known to contain no fluoride. The test shows that the fluoride in wells A and B and Grand Rapids water is the same. The response of distilled water is a negative pink color. My dentist and I went to see Dr. Winston B. Prothro, city and county health officer. We asked him some questions. Is fluoridation safe? In my opinion, he answered, it is completely safe. What effect has it had on the disease rate in Grand Rapids? No ill effects whatsoever. The death rates for most diseases have actually decreased, although we do not credit for this decline. Would you recommend that a city use fluoride in its water supply? I have recommended it since the value of fluoridation for the prevention of dental decay has become known. I would certainly recommend it for any community in which I have health jurisdiction. On file with the County Dental Society are statements from members of the medical profession over and over again that they have seen no ill effects from the fluoridation of the Grand Rapids water. The dental office, my dentist showed me some actual cases of tooth destruction in girl age as 14 surfaces of her teeth involved in dental decay. Another little girl, age five, with 11 surfaces of her teeth involved in dental decay. This boy, eight, with 31 surfaces of his teeth attacked by dental decay. This girl, nine, with 25 surfaces of her teeth decayed. I was very pleased when the dentist started to tell me about my own children. And I was glad to see that Bill, who was four, had no surfaces of his teeth attacked by decay. And Molly, who was six, had none. Noreen, who was nine, had only three. And Susan, who was ten, had only four. Here's Bill with four years of drinking fluoridated water and no areas of decay. Molly, with six years of fluoridated water and no areas of decay. Noreen with nine years of fluoridated water and only three areas of decay. And Susan with 10 years of fluoridated water and only four areas of decay. We visited a school while a dentist from the United States Public Health Service was making an examination. These examinations are carefully made to note all the conditions present in each child's mouth. These examinations have been conducted twice a year for a period of 10 years and the findings have been recorded tooth by tooth and compared with findings before fluoridation began and also with data from a city with naturally fluoridated water. A person with a high decay rate has a large number of lactobacillus bacteria present in the saliva. Since fluoridation was begun and the decay rate decreased, laboratory tests have shown a corresponding decrease in the high lactobacillus counts. A sample of the test saliva is placed on the culture plate. After incubation, the bacteria colonies are counted and recorded. The large white bacterial colonies seen on this plate indicate a high decay rate. This plate with a few bacterial colonies indicates low decay activity, which is typical since fluoridation began. And as a result of this 10-year study, the decay rate for children from 5 to 10 years of age in Grand Rapids has gone down 63%. I was happy to know of the careful control that was kept on this study and the scientific methods used and the wonderful result obtained with complete safety. 
I'm glad that my children have had the benefit of fluoridation of our water. I'm proud of the way we protect children in their play and on the way to school. We guard them in every way possible against accidents and disease. As a result of fluoridation, our children will be healthier and happier. <laughs>